Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a method for creating a helical groove cut on the surface of a cylinder. So this topic came up in a class I taught recently, and instead of taking up class time, I said, hey, let's, I'll make a video, and then everybody can see it. So you can see in this example, there's a little bit of a straight lead in, and then it's exactly a helical cut all the way along that cylinder. So <clears throat> this is a, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to involve a few different techniques. I haven't pre-built anything, so there's no model to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and start from scratch and I'll show you the entire process here. So to begin, I'm going to uh, introduce the parameters so that we can control this later if we wanted to change any values. So I'm going to define the cylinder. I'm also going to define the properties of the helix, so that straight cut. We'll say the helical start angle. Whoops. That'll make more sense in a little bit. And then the helical pitch. So we're going to use these values as we're defining various aspects. So I'm just going to run through this quick. We'll say it's a six inch cylinder. 12 inches long, straight cut is two inches. And you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Now this one actually has to be degrees, make it 25, and then the pitch will be two and a half. So by making this parameterized, then we can of course come back later on and make whatever changes we need to. So I'll go ahead and hit done. Always a good idea to save this. So I'll go ahead and save this and call this helical cut video. And away we go. So uh, I'm going to use a primitive shape. So if you're not sure what primitives are, you can come over here into this drop down, find the primitives. And it's just all pre-built shapes. It just saves a little bit of time because it puts the sketching and the extrusion creation all in one. So I'm going to go ahead and define my cylinder. Uh, of course, origin is super important. I'm just going to use the XY plane in this example. Center it. And then we can hit the delete key and grab our variable. If you don't remember how to spell it, you can just list the parameters. And there's my cylinder diameter, pressing enter. And we'll make this the cylinder length as well. So there we have it, pretty straightforward. That's the base shape. And then what I'll do is I'm going to set the stage with the 2D sketch profile that I'm going to use as my groove cut. I'm going to create a definitional plane that helps control the helix, and then we'll create the 3D geometry with the sketch. So I'll go ahead and start up a sketch right here. Make sure we project the outer loop, the circle, and I also want that to be construction geometry. Now I've mapped my two-point center rectangle to my marking menu because I use it a lot. Otherwise, you can go grab it in your ribbon, but we're going to use a two-point center rectangle. And uh, we'll say it's 0.75 by 0.5. Awesome. Another tip and trick I like, uh, I want this to be completely be vertical or centered. So if you hold down control, right click, this is a really helpful tip for just grabbing the vertical and then lining that up. So that's done. That was super easy. Finished with the 2D sketch. Now you don't know why yet, but I need my helix to start at a certain angle so I can create that nice transitional curve between the straight cut and the helical groove. So I'm going to define a work plane that's angled to a plane about an edge. So my origin is gonna serve as both the definitional plane and I wanna rotate this about the Z axis. So this is where I define that parameter that was the angle, but I actually want it to go the other way so you can hit the home key or get to the front of that string and just say negative. So this will make more sense in a second, but my helix is not going to start out directly from the straight cut. I'm actually gonna make a little transitional shape. So I'll go ahead and create that. And now we're all set to build the 3D portion. So I'll save this. And then we're going to go ahead and enter into the 3D sketching environment. So I don't do 3D sketching all the time, but this is one 
topic where I think it would be incredibly useful. So um, <clears throat> going to include geometry. We want this point and we're going to want the center point and you'll see why in a minute. And then I'll do the easy bit first. I'm going to create the straight cut here. Now I've got my ortho mode set. If you right click in the 3D environment, you can set your ortho mode. That means it's going to be directly in the Z axis. And every once in a while, when I try to add the parameter at the same time, it goofs it up. So I'm just going to go ahead and click it, make sure I lock in the Z and then I'll dimension it. And this is where I can come over here, list my parameters again, and that's my straight cut. So that defines that piece of geometry, but I also need to define my helix. So I don't want the helix to start here. And I also want to define the starting point of my helix in line with the cylinder. So I'm going to create a point and I'm going to create a point somewhere in here. We'll dimension that point from here to here. And that will be the distance. Now, again, I'm a little arbitrary here. You could of course parameterize this, but I'm just going to say it's the straight cut and I'm going to add an inch. You could define how much further away from the straight cut you want to go. I'm just picking an inch, but of course that one inch could be some parameter as well. So that defines my starting point, but this point is just kind of floating in space. So it's like a universal pivot about this point. So I do want to constrain my point to the YZ plane and also to the XZ plane. Now my point isn't going to move and it's going to stay three inches away from this point. So we're all set now to do the helical groove or the helical curve, sorry. So I'll pick my helical curve. I want to start my curve here and I want to terminate the curve or at least if I should say define the orientation of it there. So now I've defined that curve uh, center line I need to change the values here. So again, we parameterize this. I want this to be right on the surface of the cylinder so I can pick cylinder diameter. And then we're using the pitch and revolution in this case. So I know my pitch, whoops, I always like to delete those, was defined as a variable or parameter helical pitch. And so there we've taken care of it. Uh, nine <laughs> revolutions is a little excessive for what I'm doing. So I'll switch it to four, but you do want to take a look and sometimes just looking at the right side, you want to make sure it goes plenty of distance past. This should be enough for revolutions, but for what we're doing, if we ran it to five or something else, that would probably have been okay as well. So I'll go ahead and hit okay. All right, not sure what I did there. Oh, okay. I must have misclicked something. Anyway, that's okay. Nothing hurt. So there's my uh, definition for the helix, but I don't want it to start here. So this is where I can use the constraint again. From here, that end point, I want it to rest on that plane. That's why we defined that position, but it still didn't turn to the constrained color so the other thing we have to do is we also have to make sure that this, even though the initial orientation was point to point, we want to force that to be parallel with the Z. Now our helical curve is completely constrained. And the, the last part of the 3D sketch is going to be putting in this transition. So this, you can use a spline. In this case, I just want to do a straight interpolation spline point to point. So I can start that here, click here, Go ahead and hit the check mark and it produces a line. So this, the whole reason why I'm applying a spline shape is the, the sweep doesn't like to try to do hard changes. It needs like a nice tangential curve. So I'm creating the spline. Then I'll use the tangent constraints to make sure that this lines up nicely with the groove. So now that's it. I've completed the main portion of my helical groove. So I'll go ahead, right click and finish my 3D sketch. 
So the next step, just go ahead and do a straight sweep. I only have the one profile. I'm going to use this as the path, but I also want it to follow the cylinder. So if it's not already set to guide, make sure you switch it to the guide, select the guide, and then we're gonna use the cylindrical groove. And the reason we do that is now it's gonna follow that cylinder a lot better, as you can see here, versus if you just did this, then it's gonna be not really following the groove quite the way we want. Awesome, so I hit okay, and everything is looking pretty good except uh oh it didn't finish so for some reason and i don't know why but my theory is because the shape gets half off this surface inventor doesn't continue to follow the surface so what i'm going to do to quickly finish this because i want it to run out the end is i'm going to create a sketch on this surface and we'll project all those edges. We'll finish that sketch. But I want it to do another sweep. I don't want to just extrude that. I mean, I could extrude it, and we would say it just runs out. But if I wanted that to continue to follow that helical pathway, I can expand the sweep, and I can share by right-clicking the 3D sketch. Now, if we come back up to the sweep tool, I'll grab this profile, we can pick the path. And again, I'm gonna have it follow the surface. Oop, click on the actual surface picker. And then it, oh, did something new. Last time I went the other way. Mm. Let me cancel out of there. Let me edit the 3D sketch quick. Give it another little bit on the helical groove. Let's give it a little bit more. I think last time I did have four and a half or five. So it might need just a bit more to run out there. Pick my surface. There we go. So I just had to add a little bit more to make it go through. So like I said, it's a little quirky, but if you run into that, that is how I've adjusted that to make it work. I just forgot to do it the first time. So ah, live action, kind of get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I go ahead and hit okay. I think it's useful sometimes to see those troubleshooting tips. So I'm totally cool with that. There is the termination of the groove. I can turn off a couple of these and the sketch visibility. And then if we go back to the home view, there is your helical groove. So like I said, there's a couple quirks to it, but it's an interesting process. If you're going to use the sweep, make sure that you have these transition points in between. Yeah, so it's kind of an interesting shape. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and have a blessed day.